This is a 2007 Jaguar XKR. It's a great GT, probably the best GT of that year. If you get a chance to ride in one or drive it, you definitely should take it. Um, I've had it about a year and a half and love it. Um, I decided early on though I wanted to change one thing and that was to upgrade the audio. It came with premium audio, um, but for me it just wasn't enough. It wasn't comparable to uh, the great aftermarket audio um, I came from in the car I just left. So that was my pursuit. I wanted to do it in such a way that didn't compromise the car or or change the car in any way. So a complete sleeper, right? OEM integration where you don't know that anything's going on um, or at least much. So what we'll see is everything, you know, head unit intact, the the antenna that drive it, but everything, you know, downstream from the head unit pretty much is, is changed and that's what it would take to get great sound. And at this point I can attest to it being great sound. Uh, I had high expectations for this car and uh, those those have been exceeded. Uh, the volume and, and clarity and sound stage in this car is, is surprisingly good. Obviously it won't come across in a quarter inch digicam mic so I won't even try but when the drummer hits a drum it sounds like a drum. It doesn't sound like someone dropped a book um, next door or something like that. Um, I have no affiliation with the equipment that I used or the installer, so for the equipment I went with Focal Polyglass, um, in part because everything I'd read said it's a quarter, in or sorry, a two inch mounting depth um, in that five and a quarter door uh, slot, and that turned out to be incorrect. Um, it's more like four inches, and that means if you're going to do this, you have a lot of flexibility to put whatever five and a quarter you want in there. I'd encourage you to give the Focals a go though, um, as they're very good especially well powered. Um, so Focal speakers in the front, Focal 8 inch sub into a custom enclosure we'll see. Uh, Audison bit 10 processor, you need a processor to take the uh, head unit signal and flatten it out and then a Hertz HDP4 amplifier. Um, for the installer I went with Elite Audio Solutions out of Colorado Springs and uh, for me it's a bit of a hike. Um, I'll show you here in a second but I'm here just south of Boulder and uh, and, but I'd spent my time looking for these guys as well, trying to figure out is, you know, who do I want to go with and who do I trust to do something like this the way I need it done. And these guys absolutely were the right choice. Um, you know, I was clear what I need and what I want, what I can afford, what I can't. And these guys do just great quality work, very reasonably priced and, uh, you know, high integrity. They're good at what they do. And uh, what I asked for is exactly what I got. And my expectations were exceeded there too. So anyway, so let's take a look at this together and see where we go. Okay, so with an OEM integration like this, there really isn't going to be that much to see in here, which is exactly the point. But uh, we'll see as much as we can. I'll do my best to describe the rest. So uh, in the door panels there are the Focal Polyglass uh, separates in the factory locations. There's also sound deadening in there. There's a big debate about whether you should or shouldn't. I believe you should. Uh, Elite does as well, so that's been done. Uh, here's the head unit I talked about. So you see down the left side, there's more going on than um, than just controlling the audio. I didn't want to lose that functionality. I also didn't want to lose the look of the head unit. Some people do. I think they do aftermarket here, but I chose not to. So everything works as it did before. The you know phone picks up a Bluetooth call, routes it through the sound system, and uh, the vehicle um, has a it has a backup sensor that also does the same. Unfortunately, the tuner in the OEM head unit is the weakest part of the system now. It's not a great tuner as compared with a good aftermarket, but um, anyway, it is what it is. And um, but the CD player and changer are both very are both very good, as is the um, satellite receiver. <coughs> so everything looks completely stock up here, and the back seat does as well, except that I pulled out the back seat. So you can see what's going on. So there's the Audison processor on the left. That's the standard fuse box in the middle. And there's the butt kicking hertz amplifier there. Puts, I think, 120 per channel RMS uh, to the front speakers and then is bridged mono to the rear. You also get a sense for the workmanship here, right? So, um, you know, high quality components, very well um, installed here, right? All the, uh, both components are are mounted to the back wall. All the lines are run along factory lines. Everything's clean, tied off well, and, and well done. That's the rear speaker. So that's the shallow mount. That's the one that's two inch mounting depth. We decided to leave that one alone, leave it in there. And um, so it's running off the factory amp and providing um, some fill within you know what's primarily a front sound stage. And um, the whole thing together 
That uh, sounds great. So again, you see great uh, quality work here, craftsmanship. And once that panel's back in, and uh, you, you you honestly wouldn't know. I mean, you, you couldn't know that anything's going on here inside the car other than just factory standard uh, until you turn it on, and then you absolutely would know. Seats back in, and uh, no evidence of any audio equipment at all. Um, so the seat drops in in about 20 or 30 seconds. It's very easy. And then there's a bolt right there and one on the other side as well that hold that back seat panel and back to the wall. And uh, otherwise, clean. The one area we did deviate from the completely stock OEM setup was uh, in the sub in the trunk. So obviously if you want a sub, you need to put it somewhere. Um, this trunk is otherwise completely clean. Even though I expected the amp and the processor to probably to be along that back wall or along the side. But instead, the only thing that's in here is the custom sub enclosure. So that's a custom made enclosure holding a Focal 8 inch uh, subwoofer. And uh, it's very well done. So it, it looks like the fabric is different than the rest of it. Uh, it isn't. It's just the way it's picking up the light. It basically looks like it's all made of the same. Uh, material. It's just the direction of the fabric fibers. This is the software that came with the Bit 10. It's very, very nice actually. Um, the car came well set up, but um, uh, you know, we talked about it and I said, yeah, it'd be great to have the uh, software on my laptop I can tweak away. So you see the car graphic, which means that you can pick any speaker or you can pair the speakers together. And then with that, then in this middle panel here, uh, you can check the you know select the roll off points and um, set distance and delay and that's important because that's what gives the the imaging uh, in your sound stage where the vocals sound like they're coming from the you know the center of the hood or the center of the stage and the drums are you know off to the left and, and so on and then there's a whole volume panel here um, along the top and I have actually you know both channels of the of the amp. Um, dialed off a bit just because uh, the volume is pretty amazing so I had to find the right balance of volume and then the whole EQ panel across the bottom so for me I like a brighter sound uh, which this gives and um, then updating the whole thing is very easy right I just save it to a file name on my laptop I can save you know 10 different versions with 10 different settings and and then it's a it's a one click uh, to write those changes to the bit 10 and that's that's what it operates with. Okay, that's it. It's finished and uh, could not be happier again. The sound <laughs> just amazing. Anyway, good luck to you if you take something like this on. Uh, there is some information available on the web, not nearly as much as there should be. But um, you know, if you do it right and you think about what you want and what's important to you, you should be good to go. Thanks for watching. Some bonus footage. If you like sound and you like the car because you're watching this, then you probably like the sound of the car under, under power. So this is a 4.2 liter supercharged V8. It has 420 horsepower and 413 pounds of torque and uh, really a great power band. It's not like the power band starts at 5,000 or something. You get consistent power throughout the power band, paddle shifters, you know, an adaptive sport mode that adjusts the suspension and the, and the shift points and uh, <laughs> it's great.